Hi guys, my name is Varadante and welcome back to Overpain, which means I go through my Patreon page and check out the remaining two submissions that you guys sent to me in October. First patient is Nakras. Hi Nakras. Hey Boro. I return again, this time with a painting that I think is very fitting for this month. The Spooktober, that's right. This is my necromancer character and he's stealing hearts unromantically. I really wanted to portray him in a moment of blind fixation with raising the dead, with a somewhat distant and cold expression, walking down the stairs of an evil lair like a little goth man he is. Yes, that is a whip made of human spines. Yeah, I was thinking about that. I've always struggled with darker settings in paintings and keeping the values readable. I think for the most part I've managed to keep the shadows from looking muddy, but at the same time they still feel muddy. I'm not sure about how the two different light sources interact, those being from the dark magic and the moonlight. The last thing I'm a bit less confident about is the rendering of the different textures. Most of his design consists of skins. Leather, snakeskin, human leather, <laughs> bones along with a bunch of wet surfaces from the blood which I didn't know how to render in this context. I'm not sure about my brushwork and if my colors look too bland. And any other tip you have for me I would love to know. To make a long story short, help. Also, I don't know if this will help at all, but in case it does, here's what I have for his character sheet so far. Ooh, so this is actual like concept design of the model. Thanks for this, maybe it'll make some things clearer. So yeah, let's analyze the thing. Right after a quick word from this channel sponsor Wingfox. They have a new course called CG Sketch Painting Head Portrait. I really like this course because it has a very narrow subject and it only focuses on that. This time you're not gonna be working on the full height character from scratch, you're actually just gonna be focusing on how to turn a photo of a person into a beautiful artistic portrait. Your lecturer, whose nickname I'm not even gonna try to pronounce, has a lot of experience in creating portraits specifically for production, which is very valuable. And what's great is that during the course you will follow not just one, but six different portraits creation. You can find the link to the course in the video description. It's in the early birds fundraising stage, which means you have six days to get the full access to the course when it starts coming out for just $9. So find the affiliate link to this course and also a discount code for other courses in the video description. Now let's go back to overpaint. So the first thing I noticed which is gonna be kind of weird, but I think you chose the wrong hand for the magic. There are several reasons why this hand holding this bright green magic would work a lot better. First of all, you have the moon on that side that gives you nice rim lighting. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do it, what do you know? <laughs> now, it sounds like I'm almost trying to cheat my way out of uh, you know, making things work the way they were intended by the author, but I think this is the kind of stuff that is a part of our process. We need to, like, not just being able to render things better, whatever they are, but arguably even more important is to put things into proper positions so they would work the best for the painting, especially when they don't really matter. Like, it doesn't matter if the hand is the opposite, I don't think it would imply that he's a lefty or anything. Or we could, you know, all together mirror the image. And then it would be like this picture and he's now... whatever. <laughs> you get the point. Like, it's not important to the story, I think. So why not position the lights on a bit more of an opposite sides? It's always a good idea. When you're planning the lighting, Think about like the triangle or at least the lighting sandwich. If there's a character and one light is over there, the other one should be like on the other side. Because no light looks good when there is already another light lighting up all the surfaces around it. Things become flat and gross, especially considering these two light sources are of different color. When different colors of light blend on the same surface, it looks gross. 
like a flashlight photo at a bonfire. You know, everyone's orange, but also there's cold something on them, like, ugh. So I'm gonna grab this stuff, this, this lovely thing right over there. And we'll add some motion to that, maybe. <laughs> maybe not that much, but... And I'll just keep it there for now. But yeah, I think this is one of the most important fixes here. Because I could go ahead and tell you like, yeah, you need to go more specific and maybe we'll go with also a stronger like rim lighting from the moon. Then you have to decide which light is brighter because having them of the same brightness is bad. <laughs> And I think it makes sense to make the magic brighter, especially when it's like right there, you know? A moon is a moon is the kind of thing that's just means it's night. And night should be dark, while magic should be impressive, so it makes sense that it should be brighter. Then it would pretty much dominate over all of these uh, rim light parts, probably. And mostly you would get this green lighting. But yeah, it would really be kind of messy in here. I don't really like it. What I would actually do in here, if I would like stick to this layout, I would probably make the moon really dark. Like, so it wouldn't matter almost at all. Like, yeah, there's moon outside, but there's really bright magic going on. So our eyes adjust to the bright magic. So the moonlight is like nothing. But this way, we don't have to do that. We can get a taste of both. We can have nice moonlight situation on the left side, or on, on his left side, on the right side of the picture, and have a cool magic going on on the other side. Also, yeah, one more thing, I should tell you this right away, is that this is the color of the head that it should have. Except for the very rim lighting where there is actual moonlight, everything else is only lit by this green magic mostly the character and the room. Everything should be just green. And you see, I'm not choosing very saturated green. I literally, I dropped this color. It's not super like acidic green magic or anything. It's like nice color. And it totally makes sense to, you know, affect colors also not too strongly by it. Meaning we can still see that this is red blood and everything, you know, when we apply this color here. I'm using like a multiply layer here, so this is what I'm just doing. Any moonlight stuff will be from the back only. And yeah, generally like this part is all in the shadow because that's where the window is, you know. I'll make this green base for pretty much all of it. Well, not all of it. Like the shadow is definitely really green here. So yeah, about the shiny objects, think of it this way. Pretty much render them if they were just dry, but a bit darker, and then apply a sharp highlight on top. Because that's what pretty much happens uh, when an object is wet or glossy in general. That means the highlight, instead of being super, you know, diffused and uh, lighting up all of the surface of the object like this, instead it all compresses, like it removes itself from all the broad area everywhere and just remains very bright in one little line if it's a cylindrical shape, a dot if it's a spherical shape, and some kind of noisy mess if it's a lot of wrinkles. <laughs> And yeah, all the lighting will be from the other side, of course. And you see, this is exactly why we chose the lights to be on the opposite sides. Right now, I'm making this side darker, and the rim light from the moon will be looking really cool, because there is now space for it. Space being the shadow part. Yeah, that's cool. Hundred percent overpaint mode. Trying to repaint the whole thing with this completely opposite lighting. What a time to be alive! You guys are so lucky. This looks horrible. <laughs> the 
this is so weird repainting all this detail in such a speed painting mode <laughs> but i think it's legit worth it like generally when it works it works really well And yeah, some wrinkles will show up very nicely in this rim lighting, as they always do, since this is reflections. And in here, maybe a little bit moonlight would win over the lighting from the magic as a reflection. Maybe a little bit it would become strong like this, but that's about it. I don't think anywhere else it would actually show through all that much. And this way we get a nice feeling of depth thanks to this, uh, you know, Fresnel reflection going on, showing a strong angle, so that looks awesome. But aside from that, we're getting a clean lighting from the magic. What did it look like, by the way? Oh, right, like that. And in here we have a nice space for, you know, showing it really cool shape and everything. And maybe that's all we would see from the hand really at this angle, but you know, you can position it a bit differently, more from a side to have a better look at the hand. And yeah, one thing about the way you positioned the lighting from the moon, you really wanted to show a lot of the stairs, I guess. But I really feel like a lot of things would look better if the moonlight would start like almost, almost here, where this shadow from the cape was before. Maybe not as far, but it feels like it's really short. It should be further. And yeah, let's go with a bit of a cleaner lighting. Like, where is this light coming from? Like, there is no reason for this moonlight to be from the front. So why not just go literally black on it? Maybe a really dark green in here, just because, you know, lights bounce around, obviously. And only gonna get darker and darker as it goes further away. So I blend it in more and more into this really dark color here. And really, if you start thinking about, like, combining these two lights, this one is hitting from the top pretty nicely, like it's a, somewhat of a soft light and everything, so generally, like, bright from the top and a lot darker from the side, but still having a little bit of that color because, you know, the light source is soft and lights bounce around. But when it comes to the moonlight, if when you start thinking about that, it's like it's going from that side. Somewhere we need to make that shadow happening from the window. Then each step will cast a shadow. It's just, it's so bad. Will cast a shadow either completely. That would mean that, you know, the stairs are generally just in shadow because they also go down. Same as the moonlight projected shadow. Maybe it would only, you know, actually end here, for instance. Kind of like this. Assuming the character wouldn't cast their shadow in here, that means everything is in the shadow from the moon. So let's say the angle is strong enough to hit every step, then each step would cast a shadow onto the next step, and there would be like the line from the top, the line from the side, then the line of the moon shadow, then the line of the moon light blended with the green light of the magic. And it's just gross. At this point, just make the moonlight dominated by the green light of the magic. So it just softly fades away. And that's it. Don't overthink it or anything like that. That's what I recommend doing. Not because it's like too hard, but because it's too hard and literally making things worse. If I would have a 3D scene like that with perfectly physically based rendering and everything, I would just think about how to move things around or make the magic brighter, therefore lower the exposure of the scene so that moonlight wouldn't be affecting this area. And yeah, again, highlights, cylindrical shape, 
kind of like this. It's also curved out a little bit so the that highlight would end quickly. So yeah, a lot of the times, like too many times, the problem with, uh, you know, like I, I'm not sure about how to work with lighting and like I'm not good at figuring out how the light should work. A lot of the times it's just about not knowing which lights and which light positions work. So like start with a better positioning. And that stuff is very easy and awesome to learn in 3D because you can move those lights in real time and see what works and what not and what not. And second, it's like uh, watch movies and analyze where the lighting is really cool looking and what makes it work. And try to repeat that in 3D. And after you understand that, start painting that lighting thinking everything through, like, then you can think about how do I not mess up this good lighting that definitely works. So yeah, it's like the way everything in painting works, you know? You have to not just know how to paint something, but also what actually works at all. Like, for instance, knowing anatomy is really important, but it doesn't mean that someone who knows anatomy can turn any stupid, goofy, weird pose into a masterpiece. Because someone who knows how to paint anatomy, how to draw anatomy, they also know that you should change the pose, choose better angles for things, because they just don't look good when you paint them awkwardly at absolutely random angles. So with the lighting, it's the same thing. gonna remove this uh, vapor from the mouth. Not that it's a bad vapor, but now we have this thing going on and they really shouldn't be next to one another, you know. Maybe we could move it to the other side. Generally, that would work. I don't know, something like that. I really feel like it. it's not necessary in here at all. But maybe, you know. So yeah, I guess this is it. Pretty much reworked the lighting and um, that's about it. Maybe uh, some shape design kicked in while I was repainting the all the surfaces. And yeah, something glossy, just make it darker and look for good places of highlights. And that is a complex subject, obviously, but study photos. Study materials that have highlights on them. Uh, that's the only real way to learn where to place these so things would look good. And generally try to decipher that stuff that you see in photos by analyzing what kind of shape is it. You know, a plane, a cylinder, a sphere. If it's too complex, then think on smaller parts. Like, look for those spheres, planes and cylinders at any scale. So yeah, went from this very casual look with, uh, well, quite a messy lighting going on in here. And I think really, if you would go with this positioning of lighting, I think you would be a lot closer to this uh, look in general because it's so much easier to work on lighting where lights are separate and you should always work on lighting that is separate like that. Like, it's not like you avoid working on certain scenes, you just avoid making a mistake because that kind of lighting never looks good. It's either overall just one big soft light and then it's just you know, overcast ambient lighting. Or if we have sharp direct lights, always look for one side and then the opposite side, at least. There's also a triangle where one light would be here, another one here, and the third one from the back. But like this light should be like noticeably darker than this. Like one of them would be key light. Another one would be like reflected light. And the third light in the back is the rim lighting that just supports the silhouette. That's generally the rule of thumb for your lighting. Either just two lights or three lights like that. And anything else usually becomes like a simple natural light. 
So either just generally soft light of the sky with the sunlight or just one big soft light, like for instance, would be just the moon or just one candle. Then it comes down to just one light in the scene. But if you have two sharp lights, they should be on the opposite sides. So you would have a line of shadow that divides two different lights. And this way, you're just working on one light at a time. If I'm working on this side of the arm, that means I'm only working with a green light. And that means that this is going too close over there, which is wrong. So yeah, if one light is getting into the area of another light, that's a mistake. Start thinking about where you didn't get that one of the lights should have faded away already, you know? If they overlay, like on this finger right here, obviously this finger is like facing the green light in here, and only a little bit at the top in there, maybe it would catch a little bit of that uh, moonlight in there, just a little bit. And generally, by the way, they slightly get closer to each other in here, because if in here the light is hitting like from this side, like this, and the moonlight is on the other side like that. In here, the moonlight is already from this side, and the magic light is from this side, so they're, they become much closer to each other because of this. Since the moon is in the shot, that means it's uh, perspective distortion, so we still get different directions in here. So if you ever have a light source in the canvas, like you can see it, that means it's a complex lighting where angles change all the time. That's one extra piece of information for you <laughs> to make everything even more complex. That's not as important as the fact that you should just position lights uh, in opposite locations from the character. So yeah, there we go. The second and the final patient for today is Jupe Finn. Welcome back, Jupe Finn. Sup, Boro? Been a while. So I finished up my first proper portrait, apart from the countless half-finished ones in my folders. Although I'm happy with the materials myself, the face and maybe lighting leave a lot to be desired, honestly. Anyway, blast this piece to smithereens with your critique so I can improve. Thanks a lot and keep up the good work. Let's go! All right, let's see. My biggest issue with this picture right now, and as I'm selecting the guy to separate him from the background, no, it's not composition. It's like shape design, I would say. Well, obviously anatomy and stuff like that is not perfect, but we generally are in this art style where things are a bit less serious, so it kind of works. So that in turn makes it work. And I even like the fact that, like, the guy is um, on the right side from the center of the picture and he's looking away. It really feels like the cinematic shot with the bokeh in the back. Like, he's moody, he's having, like, this moment, he th he's thinking about something or he realized something that's uh, making him think, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, it, it works for him to be a bit like distant and closed up in himself. That's why he's like looking away a little bit. That'll do. Thank you, Photoshop. Now, one thing I would do, like starting with the shape design, I would probably pose him a little bit differently. Let's try Puppet Warp. Don't be jealous if you don't have Photoshop. I just needed to fix other people's artwork. <laughs> So yeah, I would maybe bend him around a little bit like this, you know, so his pose would actually be going for a certain gesture, like maybe he is doing a little bit of this, you know, because right now, originally, he's really just standing very static, very straight like this, and it's like, you know, generally the location, the turn of his body and you know, the moody uh, boca and stuff like that really dictates the mood, so I figured it out. But his pose needs to work a bit better with that. So yeah, a little bit like this. Like, I'm not trying to come up with, uh, like, extra, you know? Like, if I would be making a portrait like this, maybe I would make it a bit 
stronger expression, but then you need to come up with it like it would be a different picture altogether, different story. But from what I see, you know, you didn't really think of going for something strong. We can still like make it at least a little bit more elegant, maybe? Now for the background, uh, you have this line. Uh, this is such a special line. I had such a long relationship with this line. <laughs> When you paint a portrait or a character of full height or anything and you think, well, they're like three quarters, I need to show a background, but it shouldn't be like disconnected. It needs to be also in that perspective. And what you do is you draw this line and it's like we're seeing the character and they're like at this place where things are all going like that. And thing is, the perspective doesn't really work this way. If it's a portrait, the way portraits should be done, that means the horizon line is at his eye level. And that means any kind of perspective lines should like, you know, get to the horizon somewhere out there to the vanishing point. So the strong tilt is too much. And that's why everything feels a bit like falling apart. Like. Maybe the camera is looking down a lot. That's why we're seeing the perspective so strongly. If you tilt something down, you start seeing stuff going away like a lot. And if it's forward, especially in portrait shots, it's usually like zoomed in a bit or something. And, you know, the character would be close, but whatever is behind the character wouldn't be as close. Even if it's like the, um, the seat that he's sitting on, right? It's just the back of his seat. If it's the seat, then the line of the shoulders is like this, you know, it it wouldn't be that way. Like it was, yeah, pretty much the same way before. I didn't really change that. So my best guess is that this is the seat and then I would probably go ahead and fix the perspective a little bit on his shoulders. And yeah, I'll align the back of the seat a little bit to that part. Never leave like flat, flat colors. You you didn't even leave them flat. That happened while I was fixing stuff. But yeah, like always look for a gradient. And of course, it's pretty easy to find it here. That's me trying to come up with uh, like heavily motion blurred traffic lights or something. Now let's work on the shading of the character as well. Though I'm usually anxious about pieces that have like very stylized art style because I just turn it into my art style then and everyone's pissed off. But so I'm gonna go with the lighting. Let's decide on that. One is gonna be lighting up like this from from the front a little bit from the side and another one will be just the rim lighting from like the city or maybe uh, another light lighting up from from the back so just a lighting sandwich so what i'm gonna do now actually yeah i'm gonna remove all the shadows well this one's fine and now i'll be doing some magic with the soft brush and i know what you're thinking this looks horrible, <laughs> because it is, but I may have a plan, because after all, physically, it's correct to just use black color to remove all the light, because when you have no light, you get black color. It makes perfect sense. It's just that somewhere in the transition, we need to add some complexity to the gradient. Anyway, yeah, I'm using the soft brush because it's much easier to show that the light is soft. So yeah, I, I'm kind of doing it like this, very harsh and strong. Uh, so maybe it would explain something about the way you work on the lighting, you know? So right now I'm just thinking on this one light coming from here. I don't think about the other light. I'm only painting this one at the moment, the main light. And I'm just thinking about like shapes and how they would react to that angle of light with their own angles of the surface, you know? And here we have this curvature of the nose. So it's softly fading away, then it suddenly ends 
And there's this another curvature of the cheek that's catching some of the light again. That's why we have soft edge, sharp edge, soft edge, sharp edge. But yeah, of course, it takes time, it takes practice, it takes a lot of references and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Learning from reality, how things work. So right now we're at like PlayStation 2 graphics. A lot more polygons, of course, because soft brush and everything. So a bit better. So yeah, now we have this and obviously the shadows are really strong, even if we don't think about the fact that the skin looks like plastic or concrete. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna tone down these shadows a bit because there's ambience in the place where he's at. He's probably in the car. Yeah, that totally makes sense. That's why there's traffic lights. Why did I just realize that? I guess when I added the light, I, I saw it, saw the place. <laughs> but yeah, something like this. You see how it's like, it's still a pretty strong light. It dictates strong mood. It's actually the light coming from the window that he's sitting at. While it's still like, it, it has some ambience inside of the car. It so works like a car now because the shadow is still pretty intense. So yeah, this way we're getting our light and honestly, I don't even feel that strong of a necessity to add like skin translucency, but let's go ahead and maybe try and do that. I'm gonna lock the transparency on the shadow layer. By the way, I thought for a second, what if someone was like doing exactly what I was doing step by step as they watched this? And now I go like, well, it'll make this layer a bit more transparent. Like what? He was doing it in a separate layer. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, I didn't, um, specify but you should be working in a separate layer if you're painting pitch black shadows because you'll need to tone them down afterwards so let's grab this color and make it like the skin color and i make it darker and more red probably a lot darker because we're pretty much going from black the shadow is black but very transparent let's make it you know a bit brighter than that and a lot more saturated since uh you know the shadow is pretty transparent if we want to make a difference, it will be required to use a pretty strong color. And there you go, pretty much this part is done. Like anywhere where we have like a soft big shadow, it pretty much becomes kind of red in here. Whatever looks weird, you just tone it down. So there you go, uh, was like this, became like this. Yeah, some skin stuff. It's whatever we're we're sort of stylized simplified in here everything else actually comes from more complex shape like defining more detailed parts of uh of the anatomy of the face and stuff like that with the light and shadow but another thing i want to do right now is that rim lighting so let's go with this color uh you had you actually had exactly that color <laughs> in the bag before it's just super tiny line in there and I'm gonna go with something like this. Also, this is a bit weird looking. Too saturated too. In here we have the bump of the chin. So we'll catch a bit more light here like this. So you see, it's not just an outline. It has more to it. And as always, this lighting sandwich technique immediately makes things look really cool. <laughs> Also, I really want to remove this uh, this highlight. It, it now doesn't make sense because the lighting is from the different direction. Yeah, some, some tinier details on the lips and the chin. And let's go back to our rim light. Look at that, it's almost like a 3D cartoon now. And yeah, with, and yeah, I'll add yet another layer now and I'll add like deeper shadows. So we have like this main light and then it's casting a darker shadow here, but there will still be like even darker shadows. Oh my God, that's so weird moving this face around. <laughs> we'll still have even darker shadows where, you know, under the nose, 
where the lips touch, stuff like that. Stuff where even that ambient lighting that's filling up the shadow part, it won't get into those deep areas. So yeah, we're adding some extra presence, extra detail. And since this rim lighting layer is actually pretty much a highlight layer, let's use it to add some highlights from the main light as well. I'm not sure what's the nature of these bits of hairs, but I don't think it matters too much. It's like a roundy shape, so I'm shading it like one. So yeah, I'm adding like a soft spot, then I erase from it, and then add some accent bits as well. And let's make the nose really translucent. So I added a pretty strong red color to the shadow layer here. There we go. So yeah, that'll be it. Let's probably stick to this. Of course I could, I don't know, work on the brushwork maybe, although kind of we went with this different style of using the soft brush for the lighting and, you know, sharp stuff for the details and shapes in general. So that kind of works on its own. Anatomy, it's kind of stylized in here and kind of works. I sort of fixed the shape of the nose a bit with the new lighting as much as I could, kind of. Uh, and yeah, I changed the pose a little bit to make it work uh, as a bit better as I thought it should. And yeah, the background in a different perspective. I think it's a good place to focus on these things for now, especially on the way lighting works. I think it was uh, pretty well visualized in this case how things should work. Also, as I think of it, it should be noticeably darker on this thing, probably. Kind of like that. And yeah, really hope it was helpful. Uh, as you can see, it's just about like thinking through the lighting. The artwork as it is can very much work with just few of these fundamental things in place. It wasn't that hard to add this lighting. Maybe you didn't know how to even start with it to apply it like this, you know, more of a globally and three-dimensionally, but maybe with this approach, you know, separate layers, soft brush and uh, making sure you follow the curvatures to, you know, go with a soft gradient, then sharp edge in here, then again soft, that's like an important part of how to make things work, because a soft brush kind of a lot of the times feels like everything's just soft and blurry and how do you work with it? Well, make the brush a lot smaller and define a sharper edge somewhere. And also maybe uh, play around with toning down the shadow more or less, you know, even if you want to go even more intense, like noir kind of look. Pretty much the same lighting, just even darker. But that's like a mysterious and um, maybe a bad character even. But this guy seems pretty chill and nice. So I think a lighter shadow a little bit would work just fine. So yeah, this is it. Thank you guys so much for your submissions. The four people from the previous video and Nekras and Jupfin for these cool submissions as well. An interesting subject we got today in this video or with pretty much changing the lighting, like either moving the light around completely or adding like the actual light and working through all the fundamental aspects of it. So that's a, a pretty cool two examples of how to work with lighting. I think it was pretty interesting. Hope you guys agree. Share this video with someone you think needs to work with improving their lighting in their pictures because uh, I think it was a pretty good example. If any of you guys want me to overpaint your pictures like this, the link to my Patreon page is in the end of this video. You become my patron in the overpaint tier, then submit the picture with a message, then I read the message and overpaint the picture. But for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Man, I'm getting such a strong vibe from some kind of Pixar cartoon <laughs> because of this super soft lighting like this, it, it feels like physically based but on a very simplified rounded shape, which is the way those cartoons usually look like.